In beginning the assembly of our computer, we'll first discuss preparing the chassis to accept the motherboard and the other components. The first thing we'll do with the chassis is turn it upside down, locate the four rubber feet that came with the chassis kit, peel back the paper on the back side of the rubber feet and apply them to the bottom of the chassis, one in each of the four corners. Then we'll turn the chassis back over, locate the eight card edge guides and install them at the front of the chassis like so. They simply snap into place. The chassis is now prepared to accept the motherboard. The motherboard is attached to the chassis through a combination of screws and plastic standoffs. Now we'll prepare the motherboard for assembly. The first thing we'll do on the motherboard is install the memory chips. We're going to install one megabyte on the motherboard, so we'll need 36 of the 256 kilobit chips. You'll note that banks 0 and 1 are marked on the motherboard. We'll begin by populating bank 0 with chips and then we'll fill bank 1. When installing the chips, take your time and be careful. Be sure that the motherboard is laying on a flat surface, possibly with the bubble pack that it came in underneath it. Be sure when you sit down at the table that before you begin working with the chips, you discharge yourself against a metal table leg or against the chassis in order to discharge any static electricity that may have built up in your body. Next, we'll gather the chips. You'll note that the chips look like little centipedes with 16 legs. Also, you'll note that at one end, there's a little half moon circle on the top surface of the chip. You'll also notice on the socket into which the chip goes that there's a half moon notch at one end. Making sure that the notches on both the socket and the chip are pointed in the same direction, take the chip and carefully set it on top of the socket. Make sure that all the legs are in their connector and then push it straight down and firmly into the socket. After you install each chip, make sure you hold the motherboard up and that you look down the side, making sure that the chip is firmly seated in its socket and that none of the pins are bit under or protruding outside of the socket. Continue this process until you have all 36 chips installed. Now we have one megabyte installed on the motherboard. Next we'll set the jumper pins to indicate which type of monitor we're going to install on our system. There are three pins protruding from the motherboard. At one end is the word color and at the other end the word mono printed on the board. Place the jumper block over the center pin and the pin at the appropriate end. In this case the end marked mono. It should be noted here that you should select the color position only if you have a CGA monitor. If you are using any other type of monitor, such as an EGA, VGA, or monochrome, be sure the jumper is in the mono position. Next, we'll turn the motherboard over and install these four plastic standoffs. They will be inserted in the holes through the motherboard. Leave open the holes at the front center of the motherboard and at the rear center. That's where the mounting screws will be used. You simply press the standoff through the hole and they snap into place. Once we have done that, the motherboard is ready to be mounted in the chassis. To mount the motherboard in the chassis, slide it carefully underneath the disk drive bay, making sure that you don't damage any chips. Once you have it in place, drop the plastic standoffs into the slots on the chassis floor and slide it back until the holes in the motherboard line up with the threaded mounting screw holes. Once the motherboard is in place, tighten the screws through the motherboard into the threaded holes. The motherboard is now in place in the chassis. Next, we will install the power supply. You'll note that there are two slots on the bottom of the power supply and that there are two clips on the chassis floor. To install the power supply, you simply set it on the chassis floor, slide it back until it drops into place in the slots, and then mount it with the four screws through the rear of the chassis. Once we have the power supply fastened into place, let's take a look at the wires coming from the power supply. 
there are two different types of connectors. One is a flat rectangular connector with six female contacts across the front and a piece of plastic molding to direct the connector to the rear. There are two of this type of connector and they are used to direct the power from the power supply to the motherboard. When installing these connectors, always connect them with the black wires together in the center and the protruding plastic molding toward the power supply. It is important that this connection be made properly or damage to the components could result. Once you have identified the correct orientation for the connectors, simply slide them over the pins at the edge of the motherboard and push them into place. The other connectors on the power supply are sort of D-shaped. They are rectangular but are rounded at one edge so that they can only be connected to the device in one way. These connectors, there are four of them, are used to provide power to the diskette and hard disk drives. Now we need to connect the wires from the control panel to their connectors on the motherboard. First we will connect the keyboard lock and power LED connector. This is a five pin connector and it is marked keyboard lock on the motherboard. The connector has four wires and should be installed with the exposed contacts inside the connector facing the RAM check banks. Next is the two pin turbo LED connector which is marked as such on the motherboard. The two wire connectors should be connected with the exposed contacts in the connector facing the front of the computer. Now push the two wire connector from the reset button to the two pins identified on the motherboard. Lastly we'll connect the two wires from the speaker to the four pin connector marked speaker on the motherboard. The reset button connector and the speaker connector can be connected either way. Next we'll prepare the diskette drives for installation in the chassis. But first let's just take a moment to look at the diskette drives. We'll look at the five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive first. At the rear of the drive is a gold card edge connector. This is where the cable from the controller is going to connect. One end of the card edge connector has a slot in it. This is known as the pin one end of the card edge connector and we will see how that comes into play in a few moments as we connect the cables to the diskette drives. Also at the back of the disk drive you'll note the power connector just under the printed circuit board. This is where we're going to connect the wires from the power supply once the disk drive is installed. To install the diskette drive mount the plastic rails provided in your case kit to the sides of the drive. One on each side. Next, simply insert the rails into the tracks on the drive bay and slide it back about three quarters of the way. The second diskette drive is a three and a half inch drive. It too has a gold card edge connector with a notch in it at the rear of the drive. The power connector for this drive is extended on a pigtail. We install this drive the same as we did the five and a quarter inch drive. Attach a plastic rail to each side of the drive and slide it partially into the drive bay. Next we'll install the disk controller card which controls the two diskette drives and the hard disk drive. But before you install this card take a look at the connectors for the drives. You'll note that there are two 34 pin connectors at the rear or bracket end of the card labeled J1 and J4. There are also two 20 pin connectors labeled J2 and J3 closer to the center of the disk controller card. You'll also note that one end of these connectors are labeled 1 and 2 while the other end are labeled 33 and 34 on the 34 pin connectors and 19 and 20 on the 20 pin connectors. This is so that you can identify the pin 1 end of the connector. Remember, we already identified the pin one end of the diskette drive card edge connector. Now we are ready to install the controller card. Align the bracket with the opening at the rear of the chassis. Lower the board straight down until it sits flat on the slot connector on the motherboard. Then simply push it straight down and firmly into place. Once the controller card has been installed, take one of the small screws and secure the bracket at the rear of the chassis.
Now that the disk controller card is in place, we'll address the cabling for the diskette drives. Note that one end of the cable connects to the 34 pins protruding from the controller card at J4. The other end of the cable attaches to the gold card edge connector on the back of the diskette drive. You will also note that there are two edge connectors on the ribbon cable for connecting diskette drives. This is known as a daisy chain cable and the A drive is always at the end of the cable. Even if you only have one drive you still use the end of the cable for the A drive. The center of the cable is for the B drive if you have a second drive installed. Also note that the cable has a colored stripe along one edge. This is known as the pin one edge. So when you attach the ribbon cable to the controller card and to the diskette drive ensure that the colored edge of the cable is aligned with the pin one side of the connector. Now position the 34 pin female connector so that pin one, the pin one side of the cable is aligned with the pin one side of the 34 pin male connector marked J4 on the controller card and press the connector onto the card. Now we will go to the diskette drives and again orienting the cable so that the pin one side is on the same side of the drive as the notch in the card edge connector, we simply slide the cable onto the card edge. Remember the A drive at the end of the cable and the B drive in the middle. While we're here, we'll connect the power connectors to the back of the disk drives. Again, they only go one way because they are D-shaped and the rounded edge prevents you from connecting it upside down. Once the connectors are in place, arrange the wires and cables so that they are out of the way. Now push the drives all the way back into the bays and secure them at the front with the L-shaped brackets provided with the case kit. Next we will attach the hard disk ribbon cables to the disk controller card. The 34 pin connector labeled J1 is for the hard disk drives. The 34 pin ribbon cable would be a daisy chain cable if we were installing two hard disks. Since we are installing only one hard disk, we have only one card edge connector on our 34 pin cable. The other two connectors, J2 and J3, are for 20 pin ribbon cables. You need one 20 pin cable per hard disk drive. Again, the cables have colored stripes on one side to identify the pin one side of the cable. The pin one edge of the 34 pin cable is lined up with the pin one edge of the 34 pin connector and pressed carefully onto the connector. Next, the pin one connector of the 20 pin cable is lined up with pin one of the J3 20 pin connector and pressed into place. The J2 connector would be used to attach a second hard disk drive to the controller card. Next we will install the hard disk itself, but for a moment let's take a look at the circuitry involved on the hard disk. You'll note that there are two gold card edge connectors at the rear of the hard disk. One is a 34 pin connector and the other a smaller 20 pin connector. You'll also note that the power connector at the rear of the drive is identical to the one at the back of the diskette drive and accepts the D-shaped connector from the power supply. Also, between the card edge connectors, you'll notice a number of jumper blocks. These are the drive select jumpers, and unlike the floppy disk drives, each hard disk drive has a unique drive select position. The first drive will be drive 0, and the second will be drive 1. We have only one drive, so we will set the jumper at the drive 0 position. Installing the hard disk drive is the same as installing a diskette drive. You attach the plastic mounting rails to the side of the drive, Slide it back about three quarters of the way into the drive bay. Now, connect the power supply connector to the hard disk drive. Connect the pin one edge of the 34 pin cable to the pin one edge of the 34 pin edge connector. And then the same thing with the 20 pin connector. Finally, push the drive all the way into the bay and secure it with the L-shaped brackets.